Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. PlayStation 2 emulator PCSX2 just got a brand new look and feel. Let's get started. Alright, to kick things off, over the last number of months, PCSX2 has been making a ton of improvements, and the latest one here is in regards to its user interface. If you head on over to the official PCSX2 website, click on the download button, and then scroll down to nightly builds, you can check it out yourself. Now this update is only available on Windows as of right now, but it'll soon be available on Linux and probably soon after that on Mac. So if you are using Windows, go on ahead and pick up the latest version here. At the time of filming, it's version 1.7.2775. If it is a later version, you should be absolutely fine. All of the later versions should have this new UI in it. So go on ahead and click here and what you'll want to download is AVXN2QT. And this is the new menu system. AVXN2 should work on most PCs out there. If for some reason it doesn't work on your PC, you can check out SSE4, but for most people here, AVX2 should be absolutely fine. Once it finishes downloading, which really shouldn't take too long, feel free to extract it into its own folder and then open it up. For reference, this is what PCSX2 used to look like, and I would say it's functional, but not necessarily the prettiest. And here is what the new PCSX2 looks like. It looks a heck of a lot better. If we go under help here, there's a very interesting option. It says check for updates. Yes, there is an auto updater built right into this version of PCSX2. Now, right from the main menu of PCSX2, you can see we've got two different options. One says add game directory and the other one says scan for new games. This is a development version. It's not necessarily finished per se. They're still actively working on it. If I click scan for new games, nothing happens. But if I click add game directory, I can specify where I keep my PS2 games. The next thing which you'll probably want to do is specify where your BIOS files are. Click settings, click BIOS, and then from here, click browse and find those files. For me, I placed those BIOS files right in a BIOS folder where I keep PCSX2 and it did automatically find them. When that's all said and done, you can go on ahead and launch a game if you want. All you have to do is double click it, or you can go to settings here and go to controllers and possibly tweak some controller settings. Once you're done with that, go to the main menu here and do me a favor, right click on a game and go to properties. From here, you can set individual settings on a per game basis. So if I go down to graphics here and go into rendering, I can crank up the graphics on a specific game if I want. If my computer is struggling to run a different game, I don't have to change global settings, I can just tweak them on a per game basis and maybe turn things down. Or I can crank things up on something that's easy to run. For example, Capcom vs SNK2 is super easy to run, so I can crank it up to, I don't know, maybe six times native graphics and have some fun that way. It will completely depend on how your computer is set up and how your computer is running games. But yes, this is done on a per game basis. So if you screw things up for one game, it's not gonna impact any other games out there. And if for some reason you wanna change these settings on a global scale for every single game you've got instead of individually, just go to settings here, go to graphics and change them in here. Anything you change here will be a global setting. And if we take a look at renderer, it is set to automatic. I recommend keeping it at automatic, but you can manually specify something here if you want. The last thing I'll quickly touch on is the interface. You can change how this looks. If you go into settings here and click interface or just click interface from the menu that you were previously in, you can change everything about it here. Under theme, it says dark fusion, gray, dark. If you like your retinas burned out, you can change it to fusion light or you can change it back to something a little bit more pleasing. You can even have it as blue dark. And just a friendly heads up here, this is a nightly release. It's not necessarily a stable build just yet. There may be some bugs, there may be some quirks, things might be broken, some things might not work as anticipated. And that's kind of to be expected. Once this is officially included in a stable release, I will do an updated tutorial. But for now, just feel free to play around and have some fun. Anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts on the brand new menu system and new features of PCSX2 in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.